everybody. Thank you guys so much for joining us for another week's episode of Heat Press Nation Live. If you're new around here, welcome. Thanks for joining us. My name is Jared, uh, and I'm usually the dude around here. Uh, we're usually giving like tutorials, demos, showing off new products, uh, doing Q&A. So if you guys have some cues, I got your A's, all right? Uh, go ahead and drop your questions in the comments. We're live right now on Facebook and YouTube. Uh, so I just want to give a big shout out to everybody for joining us. I know a lot of people are starting to go back to work depending on where you're at. So that's pretty cool. And then, of course, a lot of us are still working from home. I see you guys. You're, you're working right now. Don't worry. It's cool. I won't tell your boss. All right. So let's see who's a... Uh, oh, here, Emiliano. got the first comment on YouTube. Dominique. Ken, hey, everybody. Ken's coming in from Montana. Very cool. And let's see, I'm, I'm on my Facebook here. And you know what? There's always a lag on Facebook. So I'm going to let you guys, uh, you know, comment and I'll check back in on the comments in a minute. But today we have something really cool for you guys. We are doing, uh, this is kind of a classic for Heat Press Nation Live. If you've been watching us for the past couple of years, you know, we love to put the heat press against the hand iron. Now, today we're doing heat press versus hand iron sublimation edition. All right. So I'm going to sublimate something. And I'm going to try it on the iron, I'm going to try it on the heat press, and then we'll see what works. Now, the reason why we do this is here's something that's really cool that maybe you did or you didn't know about heat transfer vinyl. And it's no coincidence that I'm actually wearing this t-shirt today. I made this one myself. Don't steal my design, all right? This is an OG. Um, but yeah, I made this t-shirt, and at home I actually used my hand iron. This is a gigantic transfer. I think the circle portion is 11 or 12 inches wide. And then the, the the red arrow sticks out a little bit for this. So I actually did. And this is this has stood up through the wash for about four washes now. So I, it's, it's pretty. What's beeping? Oh, this is beeping. The iron's beeping. Okay. I don't know if that's a safety feature or what, but anyways, the iron's beeping. All right. And so anyway, so um, what I was saying is, um, oh, Pat says, nice shirt. Thank you. Thank you. Uh, so anyway, so this t-shirt, I did it with an iron. Now, here's the cool part about heat transfer vinyl is that it, you're very able to press it with an iron. Here's the downside to pressing with an iron is that you're applying all the pressure. So when I was making this shirt, right, I had it on the table. I actually used my large tea pad as, as the base to, you know, so I can have a nice even area to press on. And there I am, and I would do it, but this is hot right now. So I'm, I'm like leaning on it because you have to apply firm pressure on your vinyl. So I'm there and I'm just doing, and because it's such a big transfer, I'm doing section at a time, section at a time. It took about two minutes, two, three minutes, but of just me pressing and I'm all hot and sweaty and it was, you know, but I, but I did it. So that's the cool thing about vinyl. If you're just making a one-off t-shirt for yourself, maybe you're making something for your kids, you actually can use a, an iron. Now where you really want to get off the iron bandwagon is when you start making stuff for sale. You can't see it. You can't, man, you know what? I'm going to come up really close to the camera, all right? You guys, I'm about to invade your space real quick here. Now, I don't know if, <laughs> so you see right there on the T, you see how it got a little warbly poopy right there? So that's because my, uh, my parchment paper slipped and the iron touched the vinyl. Because I, I was doing two layers, right? So I did the white layer first. And the, when I was doing the red layer, uh, the, the parchment paper slipped and the iron touched it. And now it's, it's ugly. Now, you can't see it probably from there, from there. But if I was selling this T-shirt, I'd have to throw it away. Because customer sees it and they see that imperfection. Like, dude, what is this, amateur hour? Like, no. So when you're ready to start selling your garments or you just are doing more than two at a time, you really want to get into a heat press. Now, that's just for vinyl. All right, so that's kind of the preface to today's talk. Um, but when it comes to sublimation, we're going to show you sublimation is different because it requires a higher temperature. It's way less forgiving. Uh, and you really have to have even and consistent pressure. So we're going to try it with something small today to see if maybe, hey, maybe it'll work. Maybe the iron will work on these small sublimation name badges. They're aluminum, double-sided. And we are going to press, I printed out two, um, I printed out here, let's actually, let's, can we show camera two, Alex? I printed out, oh, it's on, oh, you know, no, 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 go back to one, my bad. I printed out a, a cute couple and then a space cat, and I think I'm going to go with the space cat today. I didn't have my mind set up when I was printing them, but I do now. 
So, real quick, gonna check in. Okay, there we go, everybody's tuning in. Do me a favor, guys. Like and share this video so we can get out to more people and share the awesome, cool stuff that is heat presses, sublimation, vinyl, all the cool stuff. Make sure you subscribe on YouTube. We have videos coming out every week, really great tutorials, really great stuff. And of course, on Facebook, I know you guys see it out, see it out there as well. I wanna give a shout out to everybody tuning in. Thank you guys so much. If you have any questions as we're going through this, uh, if you have any questions as we're going through this process, please drop it in there. I see a couple questions already. Catherine's saying she just started her business and our videos have helped them have helped her a lot. Oh, that's so good to hear. Thank you so much. Um, uh, top lot is asking, top 10 lot, can I ask a question regarding digital screen transfer method? You know what? So one thing that we don't do here is screen print. Actually, there's two things. We don't do uh, direct to garment and we don't do screen print here. Those methods usually require like, that's like the next level for your business to get a proper uh, DTG and screen print setup is very, very expensive compared to a lot more awesome entry level things that we're able to do. And even not even, I don't even want to say entry level because with heat transfer vinyl, you can, well, hey, uh, with heat transfer vinyl, you could really get some pro results. So it's not entry level, but like you have the cameo cutters, for example, and, and so on. So anyways, we don't do screen, we don't do DTG. So sorry, can't help you there. Awesome. Okay. So today what we're going to do is we are going to sublimate onto these cool thingies and you guys could probably see it right there. So I have my sublimation aluminum name badge. See, very thin, very cool, very easy to sublimate. And I did print out a picture of a family, but you know, I kind of don't care about them right now. I want my space cap. So we'll put these aside for a second and you'll see I have two pronounce for my space cap. And so all I'm gonna do is I'm just gonna get my transfer and then I'm gonna use a little bit of heat tape to fix it in place. Right there, okay. And we use heat tape to fix it in place because you don't want your transfer shifting. If you guys have watched me do tutorials, you know every time I sublimate something, I mention this. You don't want your transfer to shift because that's what causes ghosting. So you see how it, it's, it's right there. It's in place, not going anywhere. So that's my first transfer and I'm gonna do the exact same thing to the second one. I'm just gonna position my transfer right there and with a little bit of heat tape, I'm just gonna fix it in place so that way while I'm pressing it, and this is gonna be even more important as I'm doing uh, the iron. And today we're using something called Jet Cold DHS. So it's supposed to transfer in half the time. I don't know if I trust total half, so I'm gonna go to close to half. I'm gonna go 35 seconds. Usually, uh, I'll press these at about 385 degrees for about 60 seconds. Let's see what they look like at 35. Okay, now here's a couple things we are gonna do. I'm gonna press this on uh, the iron first. So you see I've taped the transfer down and now I'm gonna lay it with the ink side on top, so that way as the iron is passing over it, uh, it's, you know, it's gonna get heated up. One thing I do wanna do, and I'm almost, okay, you guys don't know how proud I am. I'm almost at the end of this roll of parchment paper. The rolls that we sell here are gigantic. They're like 165 feet or something like that. And so I, I like, I've only ever gone, this is barely the second one since I've worked here that I've gone through. These rolls are massive. I'm almost at the end. All right, so check it out. I'm gonna place this down right here. Again, this is our transfer. I'm gonna place it with the ink side up and let's give our, okay, let's give that a second to do. So you know what, while that's heating up, this is how fast it is on a heat press, right? Now you could do two things. You could, you could sandwich it in between two layers or you could taco it. Um, Right, so here's what we're gonna do. Actually, let me check the pressure. And you guys are probably gonna wanna do like the paper pressure test for a pressure check. I've pressed so much that I, I just, just by feeling it, I know what I need out of my pressure. So today, is, this is not a pressure tutorial. This is a, this is a contest. We're doing heat presses versus hand iron. And I'm just gonna give that. Why doesn't that want to fold over? There we go. 
Okay, man, I hope I don't have to hold this. <laughs> hold this down. All right, so I'm going to put this in there. My parchment paper is not cooperating with me. So there we go. 35 seconds on the clock, and then we're going to have a nice, beautiful transfer. I don't know if I have to replug this in. Oh, you know what? Okay, so it's a safety feature on the iron. You know how irons, when you leave them sitting up, they'll just turn off, and then you have to like, until they'll be back on again. Okay, so I just did that. Okay, yeah, it's already heating up. So the iron should be ready for number two by the time this is done. And again, we're doing some sublimation transfer. So those of you guys just tuning in, we're going heat press versus hand iron. This heat press had 35 seconds on the clock. I just lowered the handle. It's doing all the hard work for me. Let's pull it out, see what's going on. Okay. And I'm just gonna, oh wow, dude, that actually came out great. Jeez Louise. Let me show this. I don't know if camera one can, oh, you guys see that. Alex, camera, camera, camera two's on, uh, it's on uh, manual focus, right? No? Okay. Oh, cool. So then let's do this. Look how clean this came out, right? Wowzers. That's beautiful. 35 seconds on the clock. We're using jet cold DHS sublimation paper for hard substrates, which means that you can use less time and, uh, and it'll look great. This looks, honestly, this is probably one of the nicer um, transfers I've done. So look at that, 35 seconds, done. Let's see how long it takes. Now here's the thing with the iron, all right? So I have my iron. I was able to set a perfect time and temperature on my uh, heat press. This iron, I mean, unless you have like a thermal gun, I don't really know how, I just maxed it out, right? And then I have a watch on. And it won't press the whole thing at one time. So what I'm gonna do is, actually I should put it in between another one. So since it's not gonna press the whole thing at once, uh, I'm gonna have to go over it in a couple sections. And even though we have this quick paper, this Jet Cole DHS, it's available at heatpressnation.com right now. Great alternative if you're used to using the text print stuff. You might want to give a try to, to the Jet Cole. It's pretty cool. No, it's just... See, that's the problem. When you get to the bottom of your roll, it just the paper stays curly. Okay. So here's what I'm going to do with one hand. I'm going to press the one half. Apply, I'm applying firm pressure here and. Got 30 seconds on the clock. All right, now I know it, it probably doesn't look too impressive, um, but I am kind of like leaning on it. And like, I'm a pretty buff guy, right? You guys see these guns. But uh, <laughs> no, but really like it, it is kind of annoying to have to firmly press on this for the entire pressing time uh, of 30 seconds. And then I'm gonna have to move it over and do it again. Cause the, so even though we're working with a really small, uh, let's, there we go. So even though I'm working with a really small transfer, I'm still having to double up uh, on the press. And it is kind of annoying. Not going to lie. I'm not a big fan. One thing you want to always remember, if you have to use a hand iron for something, is that you don't want to uh, have any water in it. No steam. That'll mess you up. <sighs> this is a drag, dude. It's going to be real. Applying the firm pressure. There we go. All right. Did 30. You know what? Just for fun. Let's give it another like 20 seconds. Just because I, I don't trust it, <laughs> to be honest. Now, here's what's cool. Because we're working with aluminum, the entire plate is getting hot, which actually does help distribute the heat a little bit better. So we might get better results on this aluminum transfer uh, than we would on anything else on cloth. And I don't know if you've seen it yet, but we have tested sublimation on cloth with an iron and it was booty. It was dumb. It was ugly. And uh, you know what? This might have worked. Let's see. Holy cow. Oh, okay. The bottom got screwed up a little bit. Ah, that's hot. Okay, dude, I'm not going to lie. I think the paper is doing a lot of the work here. I am extremely surprised 
at this. Now, I'm gonna see how close I can get and stay in focus because at the bottom, I think it's on the left of your screen, that part is just, it's like faded and ugly out. I don't know if you could see it somehow, like, I don't wanna touch it because it's hot. right there on that bottom corner. Let's see if we can catch that. It looks like it looks like when you spill ink on a on a newspaper or on, on some on like a pen on ink, you know. Ah, sorry. Like when you spill water on ink. It just looks like the bottom just got washed out. So this one again, I couldn't sell this coaster. I couldn't in my right mind uh, sell this. First of all, it's not ethical. If it's not a good product, you don't want to sell it. Now the rest of the cat actually looks freaking great. Um, but that, that bottom corner you see there where it looks kind of like someone just spilled water on it, that's a no-no. So even though I, I did my best and I tried, I couldn't really tell because again, it's under the paper, right? So you're hitting it, you're hitting at different parts, you're hoping you got the whole darn thing. It's under there. So, oh, and that's actually, that's kind of ugly. I don't know how that happened. Oh, because it moved. Okay, so here's something you're not seeing, the back. I didn't really notice this, but because you see on the paper here how, how it has this like imprint, it's the ink that, uh, that out, got outgassed, right? I, I'm guessing I must have shifted my transfer when I was repositioning the, uh, the iron. So now this backside is actually useless. It's done. So this transfer is, it's a throwaway now. So even though, I mean, and again, if you're just making this for your kid, they're like three years old, they, they just see an astronaut cat, you know, they might not care too, too much. But if you're selling something and your reputation's on the line, look at this. This one's perfect. Where is it? Oh, come on. Catch, focus, you. There we go. Oh, no. Oh, I, oh it's okay. Uh, this one's perfect. And then the backside is still fully usable. So, oh, here, let's see, let's see. Right, oh, that's gorgeous, yeah. Boom, boom, boom. The backside is absolutely perfect, so I can now use, I could still print something on the back, which is one of the best parts about this. Uh, and you know, hold that there, because I'm gonna show you the other one, and I think now that we have good focus, you can see it better, so let's, where am I, right? Actually, Alex, can you help me out? Pro shout out to Alex, props to my guy. See right there, if on, on your screen, it's, oh, you could put, oh no. It's this right here, that spill area. And if that wasn't enough for this to be a throwaway, then that ugly stain is enough uh, to where I can't sell this. And, uh, and yeah, maybe with a couple tries, I might be able to use this puppy to, to do it, but why? Why, it, it really is not worth it what if I had an order for a dozen of these? I can, oh my gosh, if I had to, to press, hand press a dozen of these with a failure rate of half or whatever, like, dude, you're just, you're losing money and it's really not worth it. So people ask me all the time, can I use my iron for sublimation on cloth? No, no, you trust me. This, we got away with a lot. Cause again, because this is aluminum, it, the, the, the blank itself distributed the heat amongst itself, because it's aluminum. Cloth, forget it. You have to have a heat press for cloth. So I mean, unless you have a whole business of thin aluminum <laughs> items, uh, it's not really gonna work. And that's because this is a small one. If you try to do it on a license plate, which I have, it's not gonna work. So yeah, so really we just did this to have a little fun. I mean, again, it is possible. This t-shirt that I'm wearing right now, I made it with a hand iron. And it worked, kind of. You saw my mess up a little earlier. So let's take some questions. Let's see if anybody has any. Ooh, yeah, looks like we do. We got a couple questions on the paper. And thank you, Parisian Nicole, for answering. Uh, yes, we're using Nina is a long name. Nina Coldenhove Jet Cole DHS sublimation paper. But if you just type in Jet Cole, and that is J E T C O L, Jet Cole, D H S, D is in David, H is in Harry, S is in Sunday. Uh, you just, you could even type in DHS on the Heat Press Nation search bar and, and you will find it at heatpressnation.com. Um, so there we go. Can you print both sides at once? Ramona's asking, yes. Now that one, I think we have a tutorial on it, but basically what I would do is, is like, you don't, you don't heat tape anything in place. If this paper was like one sheet still, 
I would I would place the transfer, fold it over in half, and just carefully like line it up. I do Christmas, I sell Christmas ornaments every year, the aluminum ones, which get on those. Those are gonna sell out. I'm guarantee okay. Public service announcement, I guarantee you there's gonna be lots of the most popular uh, Christmas items sold out because everyone's having to stay home, so they're mailing gifts to each other. Get on it, order your blanks early, and uh, yeah, don't get caught without them. But yeah, so I do ornament and I do it that way. I don't tape them in place. I just fold the transfer over very carefully, make sure everything's lined up. It takes a little practice, but once you get the hang of it, you can do both sides at once. And then what I do is I'll put like four or five on there, press them all at once, and then it makes, it speeds production along a lot. Emiliano is asking, when is the Cameo Pro coming out? That's a great question. You know, uh, due to uh, COVID-19, honestly, COVID-19 threw this whole world for loop, silhouette included. So I know they had planned for it to be out by now already. We're in September, but uh, due to, I guess it was supply issues because again, different parts of the world are affected. So even though one country is down and the other one's up, well, they supply this part and this country supplies this part. I know there was a shortage on ammo earlier in the year because uh, Italy, like they make the good primers. And so all this premium ammo was out of stock because the primer company was shut down. So it's like, it's really crazy. So all that to say that that silhouette unfortunately has the cam uh, the signature pro on an indefinite hold there. It's coming out. We just don't know when at this time. Um, What's the best paper to use for mugs and license plates? You know what? I just recently started messing around with this Jet Cole. D oh, and you can even see it printed on the back here, maybe. Oh, no, you can't. Oh, yeah. J see it? I don't know if you can read that. Jet Cole DHS. Um, it, this stuff looks and feels great. To be able to get this kind of results, uh, even with, with a hand iron, is I was actually really surprised. I've never done it with a hand iron before. Where's my other one? Oh, here it is. Yeah, this looks, this looks gorgeous and it, and it cuts your time down. I think that's one of the benefits of this paper is that it cuts your sublimation time down on hard substrates. So again, I did this one 385 at 35 seconds. Unreal, unreal. The blacks look black. Uh, the colors look great. Quality is great. So yeah, I'd say give it a try. Nina, Colton Hove, Jet Cole, D just look for it, Jet Cole DHS. Very cool. Okay, we got any other questions? Okay, let's go over to Facebook, see if we got any questions over here. Our pals on Facebook, we've been, we've been having a good time today. I thank you guys for tuning in. Everybody's saying what's up. Okay, that makes me feel happy inside. Hey guys, hey everyone. Everyone's saying what's up. And I guess all the, I guess all the Q and A action must be going on over there at, uh, on YouTube because I'm not really seeing a ton of, oh, here we go. Uh, yes, P.L. Moran is asking, do we have a cheat sheet for temperatures for the heat press? Uh, you can go to, and I'm going to type this up, you can go to HTTPS colon forward slash forward slash heat dot press forward slash sheet. Boom. I just commented back there in the comments on Facebook, but yeah, heat dot press slash sheet, S-H-E-E-T. Uh, you find that, you just type that into your URL and it'll take you to the HPN cheat sheet, which has lots of uh, the most common time and temperature settings uh, for our most common materials. It doesn't have everything. It's not fully exhaustive. So if there's something that you're pressing, you don't know the time and temperature, just look it up on our website. So let's say you're pressing Caesar glitter and you forget the time and temperature. Um, you can just go to our website, look up Caesar glitter and in the description, it'll tell you that Caesar glitter presses at 320 degrees Fahrenheit for 10 to 15 seconds. Or you could just go to the cheat sheet. It has a lot of stuff there. Uh, you know what? This is a great comment by our pals over at Artist Breather saying, we love the home iron versus heat press test. The better the tool, the better the result. That's what we say. And you know what? That is totally true. Thank you guys so much, our pals at Artist Breather, is that I could do these all day on a heat press with like little to no fatigue. Honestly, I can only see myself doing so much of the hand iron ones before I got tired, before I got sick of it. And then like, because my efforts are so high, it's like, dude, and I'm only getting paid this much for them? Nah. So again, iron, it's great for home stuff. If you're making stuff for you or your kids, 
uh, if you, as soon as you make the jump into retail to where you're selling these things, you got to get a heat press. You really, really do. Uh, Eddie's asking, what material is my t-shirt? My t-shirt is Caesar Easyweed. I have white and bright red. Um, I, whenever I'm pressing red onto a dark t-shirt, like this navy blue t-shirt, I use bright red because it pops a little bit more against the dark colors. If I'm using a white shirt or a light colored shirt, then I'll use the regular color red. Pro tip for you guys there. Um, yeah, and I think that's gonna be it for the Q&A. It looks like we don't got a lot. Honestly, I thank you guys so much for joining us today. Oh, here we go, we got some more questions. There we go. Emiliano saying, I'm thinking of getting a sublimation printer, but I'm not sure if I should get a sublimation printer or the iColor 550. I'll tell you right now, do you wanna make dark t-shirts? Yes or no? The answer is yes, you gotta go for the iColor 550. Um, even though you could use cool products like Easy Subly or Forever Subliflex 202 to use your sublimation printer to print on dark garments, I feel like you're gonna be more happy with the results on the iColor 550. Yes, it's more of an investment, but if you're kind of looking to get closer to DTG and those types of transfers, you're gonna to wanna to look into the iColor 550. Um, they even have sublimation toners to where if you absolutely wanted to use one machine for everything, you could technically get sublimation toners for that and, and still heat press and, and do all of this cool stuff. Uh, that's up to you. Um, but if you wanna do dark garments, it's, it's, you really, you really wanna go for the iColor. Um, oh, please put it here also. Okay, so HTTPS colon forward slash forward slash. Someone's asking for me to comment there as well where the cheat sheet is. So check the, check the comments. I just commented that. Heat.press slash sheet. There we go. So I got another question. Should I get a sublimation printer or an iColor 550? If you wanna do lots of cool stuff like this, if this is mostly it, you wanna do coffee mugs, you wanna do hard substrates, like we got some cool stuff like, like dude, like this, this uh, picture frame right here, it's pretty dope, huh? Sublimation, all right? Um, these mugs, like we got so much cool stuff here. First I drink the coffee and oh, and then I do the things. Uh, very cool, like this stuff, this is sublimation. So if this is more where you're at, uh, sublimation is the way for you. If you want to do dark garments, if that's like essential to your business, uh, you might want to look at the iColor 550. Or if that's too, if you want dark garments, but that's too darn expensive, uh, then just get a sublimation printer and then you can use products like Easy Subly or Forever Subliflex 202 to use your printer to make transfers for dark garments. Okay. Ooh, this is, is uh, man, this is a painful one. All right. Parisian Nicole is saying, I have a question. Any advice for how to get rid of discoloration when tiling to make larger presses? I find that when I overlap, the section I overlap will be a little darker. I have yet to successfully tile sublimation prints. What I've heard some people do is that they will heather or feather, <laughs> they'll feather out the borders so the overlap isn't such a hard line in Photoshop. They'll kind of like soften it up to where, when, where there is overlap, it's not a hard line, but it's like a soft feathered edge on both. So when they overlap, then they join together for full color, but you're not getting the hard lines. I tried that and I wasn't successful. I'm not saying you can't be, I'm just sharing my personal experience. I have yet to successfully tile a sublimation print. And uh, I mean, if anybody has, do us a favor. And this right now is a good plug, our Facebook group uh, heat.press slash FB group. Actually, that should be coming up on screen in a second. Um, great place to share your work. If there's something cool that you're really proud of, and it's funny, sometimes I'll make a cool t-shirt or a mug or something, and like my family will be like, oh, that's cool. And they don't understand like the work that went into designing that. But then you share it in the Facebook group and they're like, oh, dude, that's dope. Because everybody there understands what it takes to get these cool graphics. So do me a favor, join our group. Heat, the, it's the HPN Creators group, heat.press slash FB group. You just type that up into URL and I'll take you straight there. If you have successfully tiled a sublimation graphic, particularly on a garment, do me a favor and let me know. Um, <laughs> Cause I'm really curious as to how you guys were able to do that. James is saying, my son is making shirts and he loves your videos. Thank you so much for watching. We got lots of content on our YouTube channel. So make sure you guys subscribe, uh, youtube.com slash heat press nation. So make sure you're subscribing to the YouTube channel 
And uh, yeah, we have lots and lots of videos. Chances are if there's a project you wanna try out, hey, can I do this, can I do that? Very likely that we've covered it in our, I don't know if we're at hundreds, I'm pretty sure we have hundreds of videos uh, on our YouTube channel, lots and lots of content. Okay, well, very, very cool, you guys. I think that's gonna do it for the Q&A for me. I appreciate you so much for joining us for this week's episode of Heat Press Nation Live. This Friday, we have a live, uh, we have a live training webinar where I'm gonna show you in Photoshop and in Silhouette Studio how to put photos in text. Uh, you can check our Facebook for the announcement. You'll see the image here. It like, gives you like a sample, like, you know, people have bold letters, it says USA, but in the letters, they have photographs. Um, or cool graphics or designs within the letters. I'm gonna show you guys how to do that. It's actually really easy and it's a great tool to add to your design arsenal. So do me a favor, make sure you guys join us this Friday and you can register at heat.press slash webinar. Boom. And finally, the last thing I do wanna mention, heat.press, so in your URL, you just type up heat.press slash support. If you guys have any questions with your HPN products, do me a favor, Check out, check out our support. Let our team know our My Expert support team is eager to help you get uh, started, get going, get troubleshooted, whatever you need with your uh, HPN equipment. So if you got it from HPN, remember, we offer free lifetime technical support on all of our products. So reach out to us at, oh, you see it there on screen for My Expert help, heat.press slash support. That's going to do it for me. You guys, once again, I am Jared with Heat Press Nation. It's been my absolute pleasure to be with you guys today, and I hope you have a great week. We'll see you.